Aloha and welcome to the Bittersweet News. I'm your host, Carol Cox, and uh, we're going to be talking about landfills today, S specifically the Waimanala Gulch landfill. Uh, the Waimanala Gulch landfill is situated on the west side going toward Nanakuli, Koolina, and those areas. It actually sits between Nanakuli and Koolina Resort. Now, uh, this landfill is owned by the city and county of Honolulu. And the city and county of Honolulu has a contract with Waste Management Hawaii, Inc. to actually manage the everyday, all-day uh, activities, such as receiving trash, weighing trash, uh, and scaling trashes through city worker as well as being monitored by waste management. And waste management uh, operates the lifts and graders and managing the w landfill itself, making sure that the uh, liner, and this is a line landfill. It's uh, nowadays, a landfill has to have a liner in it, a geotextile li liner, to basically an estimated 100 year uh, it will last, and that's to control the leachates or contaminants from leaking into the ground. Well, there's a couple things that uh, you'd like to know, and, and I think I'll share those with you. The Department of Health is a regulatory body, solid and hazardous waste. They issue a permit to the landfill of the city and county of Honolulu, a waste management, its, its agent. And that permit permits them to receive X number of tons of trash per day, uh, they, to go certain heights, and to operate in cells. And each cell, they fill the cell up and then create another cell, and this is managing the trash. But in the process, while operating this landfill, they have to have daily cover, and they usually put dirt on it. Today, now they're using ASR or just uh, tarps. So in this situation <coughs> that I'm really going to get in and talk with you about it, over my shoulder, uh, my left shoulder here, you'll see uh, pictures that I'm running as, a, and this is from a, a spill of medical waste. And many of you out there may know about this incident. It took place a couple years ago. And this medical waste <coughs> found, excuse me, found its way into the ocean. And uh, a number of catastrophic uh, events occurred that allowed this to happen. But I personally attribute this accident, this incident, I should say, as a comedy of errors, things that led to this buildup over the weeks, months, years, that uh, the state health department did not uh, fully enforce the law and were not aggressive enough in regulating. Now, the... Environmental, United States Environmental Protection Agency grants authority to the state. So there's four different entities here, let's say, that are responsible agencies, and one, three of which are government, one is uh, a private industry, a private party. So what happened, water uh, became uh, a problem there, and in, instead of channeling the water off the landfill in a cell that was being operated and receiving trash, water was accidentally initially because they had a blockage in a pipe. This is the, the reports that they're reporting. And that pipe, the water backed up something to that effect and began to flow inside the cell. Well, there's a policy and a rule and understanding that any water touching the trash itself becomes leachate. And leachate is a product that uh, basically has all the constituents of concerns, chemicals, because it has touched the trash. And you, to handle it, you must transport it to or pump it to the Sand Island wastewater treatment plant. You can't just dump that into the ocean. Well, this event took place. And one of the things that I really want to f share with you, and this place great emphasis on this, is that this incident occurred in late December, or mid-December 
2010. To date, there's two individuals that were indicted, criminally indicted, by the U.S. Attorney's Office here in Honolulu for certain violations of certain behavior. I don't know all the specifics as to what they were indicted for. But they are continue to work with waste management. They were waste management employees. And they were responsible in part for some of this, so says the attorney, the U.S. attorney, a deputy U.S. attorney and the charges. So then this situation, there's possibly a third party that is being contemplated uh, uh, an indictment file. This is what we're hearing uh, in, the, in the wind, so to speak. Well, water got into the cell and it became a threat and it posed a great risk to the people downhill. This uh, sits above the Farrington Highway, so it poses a great risk and great danger. It even threatened, and as we've recovered some emails, it threatened the Kahi power plant and it ran up to approximately 7 million gallons of water were collected in that cell and subsequently it was unmanageable. They could not suck all of the leachate out and so somehow the leachate uh, found its way and, and into the storm drains and into the channel and out into the ocean and voila, there's where the problem started. We had a massive, massive spill that involved the introduction of medical waste, medical waste that they say was treated and processed, uh, you know, to prevent any infectious uh, bacteria that would be associated with it. But the autoclave or heat process or steam. But given all of that, that was approximately four years ago. Would you believe that the state health department has not conducted an inspection, which they should be doing, to ensure that we do not have this incident again or this, such an accident or such an event? And I'll read you here where we made a request for information. And then that information, mind you, is public records. You can all get copies of this through the Uniform Information Act, is, uh, Act practice. Practices Act. You go to the agency, you file a request saying, I want certain documents, and within 10 days, I usually take less than 10 days of the solid and hazardous waste branch in this situation, and you just ask them for that information, and they will give it to you. And probably uh, you can ask for a waiver if you're going to use it to educate the public and, and public interest, or you may have to pay five cent a page, but it's, if you're ever interested in getting this or other information, the Department of Health or any state agency or city agencies, you can make that request. But the state of Hawaii, knowing that the problem developed in 2010, for some reason, un unexplained, this is what we receive when we file a UIPA request on inspection records because we want to know what is being done to monitor and prevent this kind of uh, incident again. And on February 27th, 2015, Mr. Jose Ruiz, a inspector for the Department of Health, wrote me and he stated, the solid waste section have not conducted an inspection at the Waimanala Gulch landfill since March 10th, 2011. That's approximately three months from the actual event where they had the massive uh, overflow and the start and the introduction of medical waste into the ocean, the Pacific Ocean. It's, it's illegal to do that. You can't do that. And medical waste, yes, goes into the landfill. I know many of you out there going, well, why should it be? Well, it's something that the state health department tolerates or permits. So he states that we, no inspection has been conducted since March 10th, 2011, but have conducted 
site visits related to reported incident reports, e.g. leachate exceedance. On April 5th, 2012, uh, I requested other information, and you heard the term leachate. Now, how and why would the State Health Department, knowing, knowing that we've had this catastrophic failure in the past, just a couple of years back, we know that the agency, uh, the U.S. Attorney has indicted two people, and they're still actually operating and running and instrumental in operating daily. Why would we allow that and have no inspections? So what they've done is resorted to, they being the state health department, they've resorted to allowing the operators and the city and county of Honolulu to self-police themselves. Here's an example. Uh, they write a letter to, uh, it's from Justin Lodick, uh, sent May 7, 2013. Hey, here's a text from a log that you would be interested in. At 10 o'clock, Liquid level was checked manually inside the sump using a liquid level indicator. The depth re registered 62.2 BTOC 9381. Pacific Electric Mechanical checked the leachate recovery system for problems starting at 12 o'clock. The bubble tube inside the sump was found to be corroded and broken, allowing air pressure to be inconsistent therefore not reading leachate elevations correctly. Now this is something that caused a problem four years ago and there are indictments so why would the state health department basically sit back now in the haunches and go to rest, go to bed on this subject of the landfill, steal your face with the proper management? You see landfills have problems. They can have fires, they can have floods, they can have collapse. They can have the entire, it, this situation here, it sits on a mountain, it could become so saturated that you have a slip or movement and it gravitates down and posing a great risk to many of the people living in the area or traveling the highway. So why would the state health department tolerate or permit such loose operation and not, and I again say not, take into consideration the previous situation of, of the failure and the violations. And in this case, we believe that, and they've had numerous violations in the past before this, and they've paid substantial amounts of fines. But the problem is they're really not penalizing the city the city gets to operate this landfill with no impunity, with simply being able to run it, collect the money. It's a cash cow, I should say. Uh, they get the money, and their only worry is how much they're going to get in and how much they can spend. That's the city's results of uh, interest. Now, we have groundwater contamination concerns. We have concerns with methane that may leak into the air. Well, always when there's decaying matter, or and especially this is a municipal solid waste landfill where it involves, you know, biodegradable but degradable materials or, or organics. Well, there's another landfill farther down the highway at the PVT landfill that does not take organics. So therefore, you won't have uh, smells of rotting and and other things or decaying matters. You'll have wood and construction debris and all. They could possibly face the same threat if they don't manage the leachate and manage their cells properly from overflow, but they tend to have a pretty good idea of what they're doing. But moving back to the Waimanala Gulch landfill, the State Health Department documented this spill of medical waste. And as I say, if you look over my left shoulder here, I'm running a number of pictures and you'll see the needles. These are just needles, just some now, not all. And you'll see that there are people in some of these slides, you will see people out, workers, picking up this material barehanded. 
you'll see on some of these slides, you'll see signs saying contaminated water or polluted water. But under there, someone pencil in from the state health department, instead of saying that it was contaminating and leaving it be, let the sign stand on its own, they put potentially. Quite an insult because you know when the ocean turns red and you're seeing medical waste and you're seeing municipal waste float down and into the river and into the stream and into the ocean, you pretty much can say that it's contaminated. You don't have to say it's potentially contaminated. So I raise a question and, and, and challenge them and ask, why are you attempting to mislead? Because that was my assessment. Why would you mislead the public on this? When it is polluted, you know that the leachate is, you know that the landfill, the cell up, up top had a catastrophic failure. You know the storm water ran over into the cell generating leachate. You know that leachate pumps weren't working. You know that leachate pond w were overflowed. And so therefore you know that the topsoil that you were using for daily cover was introduced into the stream and subsequent to the ocean. Now that sounds like a comedy of errors that we could have avoided, but it really is not a big deal. But in reality, it is a very big deal because, you see, some of the records and some of the activity that have taken place and document memorializing what has taken place up there on the landfill reflect that soils from Kaneohe Marine Base that contain levels exceeding the Environmental Action Level, EALs, contain chlordane, dildrin, aldrin, and other insecticides or pesticides. Not to mention the household lawn sprays and chemicals that you would use. Not to mention the flea powders and things that you and I discard in our trash and all of that. So all of that, think of the thousands of canisters or rem remnant canisters that contain these materials. All of that went into the ocean. Now, why would they put potentially polluted? Well, there's a culture here in this state that cover up, and as long as it's a state agency, make the money and to hell with anything else. Just, just make the money. This cash cow, you see, the city and county of Honolulu can take that money, the profits from that, at about $90, $95 a ton. So when a truck carrying 20 tons of trash goes up to the landfill, multiplying that by whatever the tonnage is, by the charge per ton, that's what you get. Now, they take dead animals there. Uh, they take all of the recalls. And if it's spoiled meat, contaminated meat, and all of that rotten meat, whatever it is, aged meat, that is taken to the landfill. Then they also take sewage sludge, sludge, human fecal waste is dumped up there. Now, you would think there would be a great alarm, and you would think, given all of that, the state health department would step up to the plate and demand a better operation with stricter rules and stricter monitoring and equipment that worked no longer to say that the leachate sump pumps were stuck and rusty. Because every day you have to record and take and monitor the leachate, the levels of leachate, because you don't want to exceed it, because if you exceed the leachate, it overflows and you're in violation again. And it poses a great risk to the environment. And that's what it's about. The ultimate effort that's put here should be for concerns of human health and welfare and the environment basically the same and thing. The entire coastline from Nanakuli, well, let's say past the Kahi power plant, back down to the lighthouse at Barbers Point and around, we saw physical evidence. We saw medical waste along the entire coast in that section, posing a great risk. 
needles, blood vials, vials of urine, a fecal matter. Look now, uh, there's a slide showing the actual landfill from looking from Coalina. So if you have a massive uh, failure that will potentially flow down inside these homes or cause some great risk or some harm to the people that live there, uh, is this something that we should tolerate? Is this something that the state of health department should tolerate? Now, another violation recently that have been documented is that they're only allowed so many tons per day to bring into the landfill. But you see when the H2, H power plants are shut down, they then divert some of the trash to Waimanala Gulch landfill and then in turn store it there or bury it there. And, and historically, uh, I have found the city and county and its operators burying white goods, washers, refrigerators, dryers, stoves, air conditioners, hot water heaters. All of these things could have been and should have been recycled. But instead, they allow them to be smashed and crushed and placed in the landfill. But we put a stop to that by filing a complaint. But when you step back and look at the overall operation and what is tolerated and permitted by the, the state health department, it is a shameful practice. There, it, the concern for the environment is about a scale of one to 10 is about two. And that's not me saying that. That is these documents here because you wouldn't allow people that are that are indicted waiting to go to trial or waiting to have their case adjudicated continue to operate. Now you, I know you, in this country you're guilty until you're innocent until proven guilty but when you have an operation such as this we don't have to speak to the guilt we know factually that medical waste was introduced into the st stream and into the ocean illegally we know that dirt that was used for cover topsoil contain aldrin, dildrin, chloridane, and all of that in excessive levels, pesticides and herbicides. We know that, so we don't have to be so careful that we, being polite, we allow them to continue to work. We should have demanded, the state should have demanded that these individuals not be allowed there until this matter or have some condition. But again, they allowed the city and county because this is a cash cow. Again, if you look at this water, this is what the water looked like a couple days after the sp spill occurred into the ocean. And you'll see, I found syringes and vials and, as I said, and vials of blood. But again, right here is, here's doing a routine monitoring of the leachate pumps. And this again is May 1st, 13. Leachate, some pump again. Two laborers picking spotted, uh, litter sp spotted a small surface fire in E7 cell near the toe of the waste slope near the waistline or interface. They call waste management staff for help and immediately start placing cover over the waste. Waste management decided to cover the fire in place and add water to help prevent an intrusion. Now, I've spoken with authorities and experts on this. One of the last things you want to do is put water on it because you're having problems already managing your leachate and your sump pumps and what have you, and they're rusting and shutting, and you've already had a catastrophic failure because of your leachate was so large in production amount that you produced, pre created a problem. Why then would you have more leachate problems? Why would you put water on top of the fire? but you're really just trying to seal the area off. And starving the area of fire may be one theory, but again, you're only putting more water, you're generating leachate, and also you're really not effectively fighting the fire. I'm informed that you will use carbon dioxide. It serves a greater purpose, displaces the oxygen, and then in turn, you'll have a greater success in putting out the fire than you would have by placing water.
because water contradicts many of things, especially the leche concern. But again, this was this setting here was what we found, and you can see the plastics and the foams, and and we found plastic bags and vials just floating. It was a river th that was flowing out of the pipe at the landfill, and you could see the needles and the syringes and the bottles and the medical fluids and and all of that medical waste bobbing up and down, and. Uh, what is the answer? The state health department must change its pattern of enforcement. We don't have adequate enforcement. We don't have adequate inspection. And as I've read to you there, when you don't have an inspector going unannounced to the site and inspecting as you should, then something's wrong there. You're trying to, I, I think what can be said is that the state actually stay away from the mountain so that they won't have to be or be compelled to take further legal action for the violations such as these that they are self-reporting. Now, some of you out there may say, well, why would you be concerned? Why would you object to that if someone is volunteering uh, and reporting their violations, yeah, that's a good thing. Well, it is a good thing, but you see in every landfill, to operate one, there are conditions and there are permits, and, and these conditions and permits are set there, are in place to protect the environment and human health, and w the human health and welfare. So you can't play loose with these issues. You can't play loose with the rules. You can't be loose with the inspection. And what happens is that unless we see something, we may have a major fire up there and the expense of putting it out comes back to the taxpayer. So when we go back and look at everything, the bigger picture, when we see human waste, when we see medical waste, and we're talking body parts and all of that, and hands, fingers, toes, whatever is cut off, and as long as they're autoclave, they're allowed to be taken up there. They're, the plastic vials, you can see some of the vials here got blood in them. Uh, they say that that is the, any pathogens or any uh, things of concern have been killed off. But again, the health department is the problem in this situation. They need to step up to the plate and prosecute the city and county of Honolulu as well as the manager for the waste management. I'm your host, Carol Cox. This is Bittersweet News. Thank you for joining me. Aloha.